Good morning and welcome to worship. I invite you to stand as we get started today. is a very familiar hymn that has become kind of the theme song for this series, Wandering Heart. And so I invite you to sing with us, Come Thou Fount. Come thou fount of every blessing to my heart to sing thy grace. Dreams of mercy never ceasing Call for songs of loudest praise While the hope of endless glory Fills my heart with joy and love Teach me ever to adore Thee May I still Thy goodness prove from 
interposed his precious blood. Let your goodness flow down over me. When in you I find I am free, let my feet roll, but my heart's found in home, bound up in the love of you. Oh, to grace, how great a debtor daily I'm constrained to be. Let thy grace now like a better by my wandering heart to be. Prone to wander, Lord, I feel it. Prone to leave the God I love. Here's my heart, Lord, take and seal it. Seal it for thy courts above. Good morning, and welcome to worship. Uh, we are in still, as, as Lisa mentioned, we're in our Wandering Heart series, which is taking a special look at the Apostle Peter and some of his life and his experiences with Jesus. And uh, I'll have more to say about that a little bit later on. Uh, and uh, welcome to those of you who are joining us online today, especially if this is your first time. Uh, we're really pleased that you spoke, chose to spend a little bit of time with us and with Jesus in worship. If you want to get to know us better, I would send you to our website, and especially if you have any questions or concerns, to our contact page, rocklaverne.com slash contact. And there you can reach out with uh, anything you need or uh, give us prayer requests, ask for, the Ro ask for the Rock Weekly, whatever it is. Okay, a couple of announcements to make. Um, one is uh, our Holy Week schedule. Next Sunday is Palm Sunday. And so for Holy Week, we have our Maundy Thursday worship service at eight, 7 o'clock on March 28th. We're going to have two Good Friday services this year, one at noon and then one at 7 o'clock in the evening. And on Easter Sunday, our, our schedule is our normal schedule with worship at 8.45 and 11. So traditional at 8.45 and this worship service at 11 o'clock. We also have our Spring Festival coming up on the 30th. That will be from 9.30 to noon. So tell all your friends. And there's there, uh, thanks to everyone who's already signed up to help out and to bring things. There's, if you're still thinking about it, there's information out there uh, under the pictures there in the entryway. Also coming up on this, this coming Saturday, we have a screening for a documentary movie called Following the Footsteps. You've heard me talk a little bit, uh, probably a few times, about the trip that Lisa and I took several years ago, a pilgrimage to the Holy Land. This is a documentary that follows a group as it makes its own pilgrimage through the Holy Land. We will be having a preview of that movie uh, this coming Saturday at 4 o'clock right in here. So come on out for that. And, uh, if you've ever wondered what it, was be like, what it would be like to go, this is a good way to find out, uh, quite apart from Lisa's and my stories. Um, and so, but here's a, to give you a little more idea of what it's going to be like, here's a, a trailer. It's 
Something changes inside of you when you realize that Jesus was not just a literary figure, but a real man who historically walked the land of Israel 2,000 years ago. This is the actual house of Simon and Andrew's extended family, where Jesus lived with the disciples, where he centered his mission, and where he carried out different miracles and teaching. It's so cool to have the real place, the real deal. It just makes the gospel more alive. It only adds to your faith to, to be in the actual place. The Footsteps Experience is a two-week adventure visiting the historical places where Jesus carried out his mission. This is a story of not only my journey, but the group that I journeyed with in the Holy Land as we followed in the footsteps of Jesus. Also, just a reminder to, uh, if you didn't get a Rock Weekly on the way in, go ahead and grab one on your way out so you can be up to date on all the happenings around here. So, that's all that I have for announcements. For the season of Lent, we are also, we are returning to the practice of confession. So, I would invite everybody to stand so we can do that. Okay, sorry. I don't have the right things up. Here we are. When we study Peter's story in Scripture, it's almost impossible to ignore how much he asked questions. He asks Jesus, what does this parable mean? Where are you going? How many times should we forgive? Peter was full of questions because he was eager to learn. And I have to admit, I wish I was more like that. I wish I was more eager to learn because there is so much more to learn. And so I, I suggest let's be like Peter, especially today. Let's return to Christ with the humility of a student as we pray together a prayer of confession. Will you join me, please? Holy God, we long to be lifelong learners. We long to approach you with curiosity and an open mind. Instead, we often live as if we know best. We forget that the disciples called you rabbi, teacher. Forgive us for the times when we fail to be curious. Forgive us for the times when we assume we know best. Forgive us for the moments when we imagine that our learning is done and that we have all the answers. Like Peter, make us brave. Spark a desire in us to learn. And may our curiosity carry our faith into deeper waters. With hope and humility, we pray. Amen. Family of faith, when Peter asked Jesus, how many times should I forgive? Jesus responded with abundance. And that abundance exists for you as well. No matter what you have done or left undone, no matter what lessons you have learned or are still lear learning, God's abundant grace exists for you. God's love will never wear out. So rest in here, rest in this good news. Because of Jesus, you are forgiven, you are loved, you are invited to serve. Amen.
have a seat. Well, today we are also, in addition to the other things going on, we are welcoming some members, some new members into this community at Rock of the Foothills. Uh, so, now as I get back to that script, I would like to invite the following. These persons have expressed their desire to become members of Rock of the Foothills Lutheran Church and have been instructed in the Christian faith and in Lutheran theology. So I would like to invite forward the Romo family, John, Amber, Kaylin, and Taylor. Come on up. The Martinez family, Bob, Suzanne, Nikki, and Andy. Bob works on Sundays, so we don't, we're, can't always see him here in worship. So come on up. And Lauren Ortega. At our first service of traditional worship, we also welcomed Julie Pavri into membership. So let's see. I think I'll, I, won't, I won't try and do uh, introductions for everybody, and, but let you know. But you, I'll, I, I will say you, you've, uh, that uh, a lot of you know that Amber has been teaching Kids Church as well as Nikki for us for a little while. So we're really excited to kind of make all this stuff official today. So, I encourage you all to t meet them afterwards. We will have cake in Fellowship Hall, and it's good cake. Along with this congregation, you have made profession of your faith in our worship over the, these months and weeks together. So today, we welcome you as members of Rock of, the Phils, Rock of the Foothills Lutheran Church to join with us in our mission to seek God, love one another, and share Jesus. Let us pray. Lord, we thank you for these new members of this congregation. By your life-giving power, bind us to each other as part of your body in the world. Strengthen us to serve in your name and support us in our life together until we come to that day when you will be all in all. Amen. Yay! Okay, so uh, you can... Go back to where you're seated, except you two should stay up here because I'm going to invite all the kids to come up here anyway. So come on up. <laughs> Hi there. <laughs> all right. Yes, that's right. They are welcome too. They are invited too. Of course they are. How are you guys doing today? You doing pretty well? All right. Is anybody learning something new these days? What's something new that you're learning? You don't know? Is there someone learning how to ride a bike, maybe? Or learning how to play soccer? You're learning how to ride a bike? Yeah. What's your bike like without training wheels? How's that going? Good? Okay. Do you like go down the street with your, your dad's got his hand on the seat, kind of keeping you straight for a little while while you get going, that kind of thing? Yeah? Okay. How about you? You learning to play a new sport or something? He used to. Oh. Okay. All right. I remember when we, we had a, a skiing family. My family would go skiing. So I remember learning how to ski and going and, and my dad teaching me how to put my skis like this, you know, as I go down the hill, the snow plow thing. And for the longest time, I didn't know how he steered when he kept his skis like this, but eventually I got to learn how to do that and do parallel turns, you know, asking my dad, how do you do this? How do you do this? We learn all kinds of stuff during life, don't we? We got a story I'm going to read here in a little bit where, where Peter goes up to Jesus and he says, he says he wants to learn some more. And Peter did that a lot. He kept going to Jesus and saying, teach me this, teach me this, teach me this. Do you guys do that? Do you like to ask and learn new things? Yeah. I like to learn new things. Yeah. Of course, today, if, if I have something broken at home, like a sink or something like that, I ask YouTube. <laughs> Pull up a little YouTube video to learn how to do it. It's great. You learn things, you get to grow, and you get to know Jesus better. You get to know your own faith better. I think that's pretty cool. So, blessings on all the stuff that you're learning these days. Will you pray with me, please? Dear Jesus. Okay, yeah, this is a repeat after me thing, and you're all invited. Dear Jesus, thank you that we get to see Peter 
asking questions. Help us always to be open to learn. Yeah, in your name we pray. Amen. All right. Thanks for coming up here. Now, who we go? Okay, Miss Amber has got, is ready for you for Kids Church. So head on out and have a ball. Um, <laughs> you might not be surprised to realize, seeing how we're both wearing masks when we're about with you guys, that it's been a sickly week in the Strom household today. So you see us putting masks on and off, that's why. But our first scripture today is from Psalm 51. Have mercy on me, O God, according to your steadfast love. According to your abundant mercy, blot out my transgressions. Oops. Nope. I got the wrong one. Our psalm is from one, Psalm 119 today. How can young people keep their way pure? By guarding it according to your word. With my whole heart I seek you. Do not let me stray from your commandments. I treasure your word in my heart so that I may not sin against you. Blessed are you, O Lord. Teach me your statutes. With my lips I declare all the ordinances of your mouth. I delight in the way of your decrees as much as in all riches. I will meditate on your precepts and fix my eyes on your ways. I will delight in your statutes and will not forget your word. And from the Gospel of Matthew, and as I read the Matthew passage, I would invite you to listen for a word or phrase that kind of sticks out or shimmers in some way. Jesus says, If another member of the church sins against you, Go and point out the fault when the two of you are alone. If the member listens to you, you have regained that one. But if you are not listened to, take one or two others along with you, so that every word may be confirmed by the evidence of two or three witnesses. If the member refuses to listen to them, tell it to the church. And if the offender refuses to listen even to the church, let such a one be to you as a Gentile and a tax collector. Truly, I tell you, Whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Again, truly, I tell you, if you agree on earth about anything you ask, it will be done for you by my Father in heaven. For where two or three are gathered in my name, I will be there among them. Then Peter came and said to him, Lord, if another member of the church sins against me, how often should I forgive? As many as seven times? Jesus said to him, Not seven times, but I tell you, seventy-seven times. We have been doing a practice of what we're calling visio divina, of meditating on a work of art after the gospel lesson each week. So I would invite you to... Uh, Make sure you have yourself in a comfortable and alert posture and take a moment to breathe and focus on your breathing. And with your breath, center yourself in this moment. As we meditate on the scripture and this work of art before us. As you begin to meditate on the, the work of art, and if there was a word or phrase that shimmered for you, I invite you to hold that phrase in your heart as you look at the image before you. Take note of the visual qualities that you see, the colors, the shape, the texture of it the movement of it. What parts of the image are your eyes most drawn to? And how might that part relate to the word or phrase that you are holding to?
Will you pray with me, please? Lord, we give you thanks for speaking to us through word and through visual images. And we pray that you make us open to hear what you have to say to us this morning. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen. Well, as I said, we are continuing our series for the season of Lent, which is called Wandering Heart, Figuring Out Faith with Peter. If you haven't been here yet this season or just to catch you up, we have this special focus on the disciple Peter through this season. We're looking at the life of faith and the life of Jesus through his experiences and through his eyes. And hopefully by doing that, we see something of our own walk of faith and our own walk with Jesus. And in today's scripture, Jesus has this interact, or Peter has this interaction with Jesus about forgiveness, one which I'm sure opened him up to a greater understanding of God's grace than he had before. Now, Peter's been through a lot over the last couple of weeks, hasn't he? I mean, two weeks ago, we heard him make his good confession when Jesus asked, who do you say that I am? Peter said, you are the Messiah, the son of the living God. And Jesus really liked that. And he fairly heaped praise on Peter for that, even gave him the name Peter, where he'd been Simon before. So big moment for Peter. And then last week, we saw Peter then get, well, maybe we can say a little bit too full of himself. When Jesus starts, uh, Jesus starts explaining that to the disciples that he must suffer, he must die, and he ri must rise again. And so Peter didn't seem to like that, so Peter objected. Pulled Jesus aside and tried to talk him out of it. And while Jesus didn't like that part very much, so Jesus said, get behind me, Satan. You are setting your mind not on divine things, but on human things. So you might say over, the, over time, Peter's been brought high and he's been brought low, and he's stayed with Jesus through all of it. And today, we experience him in a bit more of a learning posture, certainly more of a learning posture than last week. He's humble and he's open and he's looking to engage and absorb Jesus' teaching. And so we started today with this teaching Jesus has about how he wants us to be in relation to each other, especially at times when there is friction, when there are disagreements, hurts, or offenses. And this is instruction that every church in every age can stand to spend some time in. And Peter is hearing it firsthand from Jesus. And then we see after hearing it, he wants to go a little deeper. He hears the lesson that Jesus teaches. So he approaches Jesus with this question. Lord, Lord, if another member of the church sins against me, how often should I forgive? As many as seven times? It's important to remember that it, it was not uncommon at the time for people to say, forgive someone three times but not the fourth. So in Peter's mind, he's being pretty generous. As many as seven times? Of course, Jesus says, not seven times, but I tell you, 77 times. And I'm sure that response was mind-opening and heart-opening for Peter. And hopefully it is for us, too. A, a response which points away from any kind of rigid relating to one another and points towards infinite grace and the infinite possibilities that exist with it. Now, my apologies at the beginning of worship. I didn't wish you all a happy St. Patrick's Day. So happy St. Patrick's Day. I'm sure you all know this. For a lot of people, St. Patrick's Day is a celebration of Irish culture. It is actually a celebration of a real person, one who lived sometime in the 5th century, and his story is quite remarkable. Patrick was born and raised in England. And according to his own biography, when he reached the age of 16, he was captured by Irish pirates and taken away into slavery in Ireland. And there in Ireland, he was held captive as a slave for six years before he finally managed to escape. And we did, when he did finally manage to escape his captors, he traveled 200 miles to get to a port city where, with some difficulty, he managed to convince the captain of a ship to take him and sail back to England. So after six years of captivity, he escaped and he got away to get back to his homeland. And by his own confession, his time in captivity actually served to strengthen his faith. 
And the escape experience in particular did that. So when he returned to England, he went and he got his education. He became a priest of the church and eventually became a bishop. But some years, you know, some years after he returned home, he had a vision, a vision in which he heard an Irish voice, and I'm kind of chuckling because I'm really tempted to try and, try and say this in an Irish accent, but you, it wouldn't go very well. So I'm not, but he, had, he heard an Irish voice that said, we appeal to you, holy servant boy, to come and walk among us. And Patrick took that to heart. He took that vision to heart. And so eventually, as bishop, he returned to Ireland, the place where he had been a slave, to be a missionary. And there's even some circumstantial evidence that he may have landed at the very same port from which he escaped in the first place. Now, one of the notable things that Patrick did as a missionary, at the time, most missionaries had kind of a two-pronged thing. They tried to make good Christians and good Romans at the same time. But Patrick didn't do that. He sought simply to bring the gospel to the Irish. Now, some of you are wearing green today, and you notice that I'm wearing an orange sweater. See, there's a tradition, apparently, and this is just an aside. That's not apropos of very much of anything. But uh, in Ireland, the, 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 the Catholics wear green on St. Patrick's Day, and the Protestants wear orange. Because in the Irish flag, the green is a symbol of Catholicism, and the orange is a symbol of Protestantism. So you see me before you today wearing an orange sweater. There, I also read an article today that said that the original color associated with Patrick was actually blue, because he is most often depicted wearing blue of some kind. I didn't know that until this morning. Now, if any of you are tempted to pinch me because I'm not wearing green, I have green socks on. So, they're, they're Christmas socks, but they're green. So, anyway, that's Patrick. And I can only imagine what it was like for him to practice forgiveness, to go back to the land of his captors, and how many times he was called upon to forgive as he returned to that country. And certainly it went far beyond any kind of simple scorekeeping. So just as Peter is learning in today's scripture. So for Peter to say, as many as seven times, it felt generous to him. It felt generous and kind. And for Jesus to respond by saying, not seven times, but I tell you 77 times, is basically to say, just don't keep score. I mean, can you imagine the spreadsheet you're going to need? to keep track of all of that? And what's going to be in the columns? People's names and the sins and the rows? How are you going to do that? And, if, and some Bibles actually translate it 70 times, 7, which is 490, so that's a huge spreadsheet. Who's going to keep track of all of that? Which is exactly the point, right? Now it has to be said that this passage has been used at times in the past to manipulate people to remain in abusive situations. And that is never appropriate. Been used to say that the, the abused person needs to forgive and go back. But that's not what Jesus is saying. Forgiveness does not necessarily mean forgetting that the person might be harmful again. And nor does it mean that one should put oneself in harm's way. So Peter has come to Jesus here with a learning spirit. And Jesus is teaching him the vastness of God's grace as Jesus has taught how to be in community together. And Jesus is teaching Peter how he's called into that vastness of God's grace. And that he would do well to continue with the learning spirit. And of course, Jesus is teaching us the same thing today, right? So rather than try to figure out some system of keeping track, Jesus is calling us to cultivate a lifestyle of forgiveness. A lifestyle that understands that sometimes forgiveness takes time. It might not be a switch that we can just flip. 
And sometimes when we take the step and talk to each other, we, we might find that we, have the, we are the ones who've gotten to grow. So Jesus is calling us to a life that understands that, a life that is aimed towards renewal and restoration. That's the point of the whole exercise, renewal and restoration. Even when he says, let that one be to you as a Gentile and a tax collector, how did Jesus treat Gentiles and tax collectors? People for whom he had a deep concern. So Jesus is looking for teaching us constantly to be looking to build relationship even in the face of all the various ways that we offend and disregard the image of God in one another. And our strength to do so is the gospel of Jesus Christ. Because we ourselves have experienced the vast forgiveness and grace of Jesus. The Apostle Paul, the Apostle Paul put it like this. He said, put away from you all bitterness and wrath and anger and wrangling and slander together with all malice and be kind to one another, tenderhearted, forgiving one another as God in Christ has forgiven you. Peter was challenged beyond his limited scope and so are we. And that challenge to move beyond our limited scope brings us deeper into the unlimited scope of God's love, which is a far better place to be. So maybe with Peter, we can also keep coming back to Jesus with that learning spirit asking, teach me. Amen. Will you pray with me, please? Lord, we thank you for this moment between you and Peter that we get to witness today. And we pray that you would open up our hearts to seek you out and that you would build in us a learning spirit so we can learn ever, ever more about you. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen. Well, while Lisa plays a little quiet music before our next song, I would invite us to, to ponder this. Ask the Lord in prayer, what is it you are trying to teach me today? like a wheel less like a man less like a deal more like a heartbreak beginning to heal we can't start over we know forgiveness these are hard words to hear in a world where nothing like 
Will you pray with me, please? Lord, for all of the gifts that you give us, we give you thanks. And we pray that you help us to use those gifts, our time, our talents, our possessions, in service of your mission in bringing love and grace to the world. Let these gifts that we offer up to you now be signs of that desire and of our, uh, also of our desire to learn your generosity. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen. The night before Jesus was crucified, he gathered together with the disciples to celebrate the Passover, a meal which celebrates freedom from slavery. And he took that meal, he took the bread of the meal, he said the blessing over it, and he broke it, and he gave it to them and said, Take and eat. This is my body given, from, given for you. Do this to remember me. And then he took the cup of wine, he said the blessing over it, and he gave it to them and said, Take and drink. This cup is the new covenant in my blood. It is shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this to remember me. And in doing so, Jesus has now given us this meal of Holy Communion to celebrate delivery, freedom from slavery to sin and death. Will you join me in the prayer that Jesus taught us? Our Father, who art in heaven, 
hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. If you happen to be with us for the first time today, we want you to know that we celebrate an open communion table here at Rock of the Foothills. The invitation is from the Lord Jesus Christ, and you are welcome to come. We have both wine and grape juice available. If you'd prefer to have the grape juice, just let me know. And as a reminder, we have baskets on either side of the sanctuary to receive the cups after you've had Holy Communion. Hopefully Kids Church is wrapping up so the kids can join us for this. But the table is prepared. Come, taste, and see that the Lord is good. Will you please stand? And will you pray with me, please? Lord, thank you for this gift of Holy Communion. We thank you that you draw us together and make us your body in the world, and that you feed us, nourish us with yourself, with life, forgiveness, and grace. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen. 
We, were, we will continue now with the prayers of the church, and we have a sung response between our prayers for this season. Uh, the band will lead us into this, and uh, uh, there will be uh, some period of time for you to offer up your own prayers, either silently or aloud, and for those of you worshiping with us online, I'd invite you to put your prayers into the comments section when we get there. Today we give you thanks for the opportunity to remember the work of St. Patrick. And we pray for help, for help in how you call us to share your gospel, to share your good news of grace with those who might not have heard it yet. For the sake of Jesus Christ. Lord, for this we pray. broken hearts, we raise up to you our prayers for the wars that are in raging in our world. We pray over Ukraine for its safety and for an end to the warfare, and we pray over the Holy Land. We pray that this place becomes a place of peace for all people. Lord, for this we pray. over our upcoming spring festival here. We pray that it is a moment where all the families who come will experience welcome and joy and experience through us another glimpse of your grace and life. Lord, for this we pray. Hear these prayers that we lift up to you silently or aloud or in the comments section online. This we pray. Lord of mercy, Christ of mercy, Lord of mercy, Christ of mercy. Lord, we know that you hear us when we call know that you hear when we pray. And so we lift all of these prayers up to you, confident in that knowledge, in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Now the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen.
and serve the Lord. And join us for cake. <laughs> <laughs>